Well, everyone, this is Trekkie1701C, and let's go ahead and finish our FS port playthrough. Uh, it's been a little while since we did this. I decided to take a little break between Act 1 and Act 2. So let's go ahead and get through this. When the destroyers came for us, we attacked. Never had we been defeated. They were like the others. Strange, hideous, resisting, fighting. Only these were not like the others. They did not die. We made our first retreat. We could forgo one system. We left it to the destroyers and went elsewhere. But they followed. They hunted us. They followed us when we retreated, discovered where we lived. For a long time, we did not know why they chased us. They were no ordinary enemy. They did not seek our territory, our technology, our resources. Now we know our crime was sin. We've just received and, of course, I've not actually skipped anything, so yes, that was yet another no-context cutscene. But, so we're going back and, uh... Well, looks like that uh, whole thing capturing that cruiser was, uh, worthless, because, uh, the Sheevans blew something up. Well, they blew up the whole station that it was on. Uh, apparently they've come up with a great name for this uh, new destroyer that's come in and did the attack, the Lucifer. Because uh, they need something evil sounding. Grim news. Well, that's an understatement. Because uh, this ship actually has shields that uh, make it invulnerable. It literally cannot be damaged. At this point, the Sheevans have control of Beta Cygni, Beetlejuice, Ross-128, Ikea, and Regulus. Most of the Vesudan forces are gathering in Vega for a counter-strike, while we are gathering our fleet in Antares for an effort to retake Ribos and Beta Cygni. Oddly enough, the Sheevans don't seem to be interested in taking control of any planets in the systems or gathering natural resources. Instead, they seem to be focused on controlling individual jump nodes. So basically, locking down the systems here so that nobody can get Research through. Development teams at Seoul have recently completed development on a few new weapons. A group of Terran scientists has returned from a previously unexplored system known as Alaramis, and bring with them a new weapon called the Flail. The Flail is quite different from our typical energy. So they went out to explore a planetary system, and instead of exploring a planetary system, they developed weapons. We have great scientists. I'm starting to figure out who uh, started the war with the Vesudans. By combining the Vesudan designed engine with a Terran warhead, we were able to produce the most powerful anti-fighter weapon yet. It's an aspect seeking missile and requires a few seconds to lock onto the enemy's engine signature, but it's... Okay, good. Looks like we're getting uh, aspect seeking missiles now, which uh, they are much harder to lose the lock on. So once you fire it, it's uh, much more guaranteed to hit. Uh, though they did change the missile mechanics between Free Space 1 and Free Space 2, and this is, of course, running off of a modified Free Space 2 engine. So it's... Uh, uh, I can't remember if it's Free Space 1 that had the better missiles or Free Space 2, but one of them was a little bit easier to hit things with. Hostile forces have been spotted all over this system, and there's a good chance that our convoy will be attacked by Sheevan fighters. Just need to adjust the volume there because it's actually screaming in my ears. And it says all hostiles should be eliminated. But I thought we were like a peaceful organization that didn't kill things. So it looks like we're going to be operating with a Masuda destroyer and I guess a convoy. Uh, so, oh, we're going to be escorting convoy to the destroyer. 
so I uh, guess an Interceptor is probably good for that. Giving us the Avenger and uh, won't let me carry the Flail, even though it's a new weapon and all that. Let's see, for missiles, I've got the uh, new Interceptor missile, so Interceptor missile on the Interceptor fighter. You know, just because they're great names for this. Let's go ahead and start. And I guess I hired a bunch of drunks to move those transports around because you can see how they just, like, were all over the place there for a second. Did you see what was left of Rybos? Let's see. I'm guessing I've there's never probably. Seen anything like that before. Oh, there we go. I guess that's the uh, planet there. I can't believe a single Shivan attack could level it. Let's get in formation here and just be ready for when the Sheevans come and totally are extra ultra nice to us because, you know, that's how they've been the last few missions. Oops, and I probably should toggle dual weapons fire here. I forgot that I didn't have that turned on. Uh, one interesting thing you can do is you can actually fire all your weapons at once. Or you can just select which bank you want to do. Uh, when you have the weapons set to dual fire, they won't fire as quickly. So you can see, like, I'm holding down the trigger here and it's firing. If I set single fire, you can see that it fires much more quickly. But the dual fire does, of course, do a little bit more damage. Okay, so a freighter just jumped in. And a bunch of fighters are coming too, so... Got a lump, let's take him out. So yeah, those missiles are actually pretty good, because you can see that it just uh, went straight in and killed that guy. Moving pretty quickly. Uh, he wants to try and jump out, let's see if we can stop him. There we go. Took him out. Support. I am notifying Terran Command of the attack on the GTFR Nelson. Keep on your toes. There could be more. Shouldn't they be listening in on this frequency if this is like an important mission and all that? Like, you shouldn't need to notify them. They should be listening. I mean, there's a ton of transports here. I would assume that they wouldn't send out this many transports in one group, especially losing the war as much as they are right now without a really good reason to do it. But they're not monitoring the frequency. It's uh, great right there. Rearming complete, sir. All right, there we go. Rearmed, and looks like bombers are jumping in. Uh, you can notice that there's different icons in the HUD here for bombers. Those little triangles that are up at the top there, those are enemy fighters. And the little uh, kind of winged objects are bombers. So let's go in and take out these bombers because they can actually one-hit the transports if we allow them to get too close uh, with their bombs, of course. And uh, bombers in free space actually act a little bit like dive bombers from World War II, which uh, actually makes a little bit of sense with how they've implemented it. Basically what happens is the bomb itself does actually have some propulsion, so it is a little bit more like a missile than a classical bomb, but it will also gain speed based on how fast your ship was moving, which means that uh, you'll basically want to uh, come in really, really fast so that the bomb will come in and hit the opposing vessel without having to worry about it being intercepted since you can't actually shoot down bombs in this game. And that does make sense from a space combat perspective, because if I were to fire a rocket from a ship that's already moving, then that rocket should have the speed that the ship already had, and it should go faster if the ship shooting it was running quickly. It looks like we eliminated most of the Sheevans here. Let's go ahead and take this guy out. Rama 1. Try to go off of the Hindu thing, I think. Well, that makes sense with the whole Sheevan, you know, Shiva type thing. Uh, they try to use a very dark uh, 
names from various religions and other things like that uh, for the Sheevans. Roger, sir. Wow. But, uh, of course, like I said, they weren't as creative with names in Free Space 1 as they were with Free Space 2. So, like I said, some of the names are just, like, they, they make you want to hit your head off the desk with how awful they are. I mean, like, again, naming a ship Lucifer, especially since in the area. we don't actually know what the Sheevans call that ship, but calling it Lucifer, and it's a ship that's supposed to be able to uh, destroy an entire heavily guarded installation by itself, you know, at that point, you know, looking at realistically, why would you name a ship like that because it would just demoralize your fighting force and basically convince them that there's absolutely no way to beat it. And it just... Especially when you're talking about uh, potentially the survival of your species, which is what they've basically been hinting at with those cutscenes and things like that. You know, that's... That's just odd. And, uh a little bit of a spoiler, because you might say, uh, oh, well, they didn't know that it was that much of an issue, but on uh, the expansion that we're going to play, or rather the improved version of the expansion, uh, it's called uh, Silent Threat Reborn. It is revealed that, yes, they did actually have foreknowledge of this whole thing happening. They just uh, decided to kind of use it to their own purposes. Which, of course, that's not going so great. But they did have some idea of what was coming. Let's go ahead and stop here so that the support ship can catch up and actually uh, give me more missiles so that I can, you know, not have to just shoot my guns at fighters to take them out. Cargo on that uh, thing is refugees. So is that what we're protecting? The refugees? Okay. Oh, there we go. That's nice to see a uh, friendly destroyer there. It's uh, a little bit ugly, but hey. Uh, what can you expect from graphics this old? At least they apologize for being late. Oh shit, I didn't even see him coming. Well, let's go ahead and close in on these fighter wings here. Let's see if we can't uh, take them down. But I do find it interesting. This is actually listed in meters, so we're approximately two kilometers from these fighters. And... You know, I'm still not in missile range of these fighters yet. However, I'd be pretty willing to bet that uh, a modern-day fighter jet has missiles that can reach that far, considering we've actually shot down satellites with fighters, and they can't get within two kilometers of a satellite. I mean, I know it's for gameplay reasons, and they couldn't actually make this that big with the engine that they had at the time. Because, you know, there is, there is of course, uh, limitations to what could be done technically, and it's actually rather impressive what they could do at the time, and uh, this is also a huge change from how the game originally was, because not only is this running on uh, an engine that had been improved by Volition, this is also running on an engine that's had several years of development in it by the community and has had a lot of improvement even beyond what Free Space 2 was. But still, it would be nice to kind of have some sort of a nod to that, maybe have some reason that we can't fire missiles that far. Like sensor noise or something. Well, looks like they're saying we can return to base, so let's go ahead and jump straight out towards this star here. Congratulations. And Your I've gotten promoted and, and I've gotten an ace. Let's 
good. For having attained an outstanding number of confirmed kills, you are hereby awarded the ace. Great job, Alpha One. You so how many kills did I get? From the Shivan attacks. We were told by the crew oh, statistics to here. You on a job well done. The well, no need to go into that, I suppose. Well. well, looks like that's it. So this is Trekkie 1701C signing off until next time.